Were you uh, were you courted by Vince McMahon in the eighties to come in at any point? No, no. Well, we were no. You know, I'm, I'm a. I uh, I was wrestling for WCW, and Robert got hurt. Uh, I might have said this a many times. You might have heard this. You want to go for a long walk down the road? Please, I, I'm sitting back. Okay, let's go for a long walk down the road. WCW come in and they were trying to do everything they could to tear us apart. Well, I'm sitting in Knoxville, okay, and Robert's sitting over against the wall. Robert's real quiet. And uh, so I walked over to him and I asked him, what come you switch matter with you, bro? He goes, I got hurt last night in the ring. And uh, I came back over and I went. I'm thinking to myself, well, you didn't even get in the ring. How'd you get hurt? You know, but I, you know, then all the boys go out. Then I go over there to him. I said, Robert, uh, what happened to your leg? And and I tell you, he said, my wife ran over me in the car. <laughs> he, oh, she did. So he pulled his britches down. I'm not kidding. His whole leg was black and blue. And uh, see, we wasn't on contract. You hear me? Everybody else was. But it was owned by WCW, Ted Turner. Uh, so I, uh, I told Robert, I says, you, when I go to the ring tonight, I play our music. He can't even walk, Carly. I says, we're wrestling Butch Reed and Ron Simmons. And I didn't say nothing because he did. I said, when they play our music, I'm going to shoot out that curtain. I'm going to go through the people, do our stuff. And I says, you get to the ring and get your ass up on the side of that ring, no matter how bad it hurts or what you do. So, uh, boy, I'm out there, I get him, I, and I see Robert on the side of the ring, and I go to the ring. I start the match off, but I told him, I says, uh, when I tag you in, come in and fall. You know, you, your knee, because you got hurt in the ring. Well, that's exactly what happened. I tagged him, he went down, boom. His leg was bone, he got hurt in the ring. So, WCW sent him to the University of Alabama where the best knee surgeon in the world was. They paid him $2,000 a week, everything paid for, for a year. Okay. Now, now here I am. I, uh, I have nowhere to go. Okay. So either they wanted, they said, they give me a contract if I would team up with Brett Armstrong and be the new Rock and Roll Express. And if that, they didn't really have nothing for me, but they would put me with Terry Taylor as the York Foundation. So I went with Terry Taylor's York Foundation. And then, but where I'm working to, and I'm not trying to make, because this is a, about us going to WWE. We left, as soon as Robert came back, I beat him at Capital Punishment when I, at the York Foundation with thing. The next day, me and him left and went to Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Hmm. Jimmy Cornette opened up Smoky Mountain. Okay, and let's say we was there for like three years, and and Jimmy, uh, the, the company shut down, but we was loyal to Jimmy, and we did good business. It was just a small territory; you couldn't compete with television as it was going up. You you couldn't do that unless you was a big corporate company or big corporate business with million dollar sponsors. So. We didn't have a job, but Jimmy was going to w, WF. So Jimmy got us a job. And that's the reason we went there. Wasn't nothing that was going to, because when we got there, you know, you got a million guys wrestling. So nobody called us. Jimmy Cornette took care of us. He got us a job. We didn't get a contract, but we made $500 a week. It, even if we didn't wrestle. And then when we did do the shows, we got our $500 a week plus paid for those shows. And, and Vince was a good payoff guy. You know, I, I know we went to, uh, you know, the Germany, Switzerland, and all over there for like four days. And, you know, I think I got paid like seven grand. I'm like, holy shit, that's a lot of money. You know, for me. And, uh, 
But that was the whole thing about Warner. Jimmy Cornette took care of us. He got us a job. And then, you know, and then being lost in a shuffle, our time ran out. And then I found out that we could do a twice as better on the independent circuit. And me and Robert's been on the independent circuit ever since then. And plus going to Japan a lot at that time. So yeah. that was my thing about WWF. Yeah. They didn't call us. Jimmy Cornette got us a job. So I'm glad you listened to that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, do you know, it sort of brings into the first time I saw you. So uh, when I was watching wrestling in 98, uh, I watched for a few, uh, you know, a little bit in 93 and beyond, fell out of it and then started watching again in 98. And uh-huh. I remember watching you as part of the NWA invasion. And yes. at, the, at the same time on Sky Sports, which is where all the WWF stuff was, they were also showing WCW Classic from uh, 1990. And so you're uh-huh. in the York Foundation there, and then you're in the NWA sort of weird invasion thing at the time. Yes. And, Me, uh, Robert, Jerry Jarrett. I mean, Jeff Jarrett, Barry Wyndham. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, and I was just thinking, do you know what? When I look back on the 80s stuff, when I was a bit older, I was like, God damn, the Rock and Roll Express were great. And they just weren't doing anything with you. You had to win a feud with the Headbangers, I think, at the time, for the most part, yeah, in 98. Yeah, you know, yes. yeah, we had a few matches there. They're great guys, too. Yeah. They were good to work with, uh, but they had no plans for us. So. And it was good. And I'm glad you said that because, you know, somebody I seen it hit on something on uh, Twitter the other day about. They were watching the Fantastics wrestle the Bushwhackers. Hmm. And then they said it it clicks to the Rock and Roll Express watching wrestling the Bushwhackers. And it says it's like Tommy Rogers and Bobby Fulton were in slow motion. (laughs) And the Rock and Roll Express is all over the place. You know, that's that's a good compliment. But don't get me wrong. I love the Fantastics, Bobby and Tommy. Uh, it was just saying that back in those days, comparing us and, and, and stuff that we did, we, that we did, we had some of the greatest matches in the world just underneath cards. Mm. And, and it couldn't compare with the uh, new Midnight Express of uh, Bob Holly and um, Bart Gunn. Because that was the only exposure at the time that I had to the Rock and Roll Express and Midnight Express was the yeah, fake uh, Midnight Express at the time. Yeah, Jimmy Cornette came up with that. But Jimmy, you know, but Jimmy, I think, kind of managed this. But you see, it was all right because I got paid. And the you extra know? exposure as well. I, mean, it, I bet yeah. that like upped your indie um, uh, wages as well, massively, just being on national TV. Yes. Uh, and, it, you know, it, it's different, really. Different. You know, when I, when we went to uh, overseas, I mean, not to Japan or all, I'm talking about like to Germany or Switzerland, we were heels. People didn't like it. <laughs> you know that, they, but they cheered the heels there. That was a whole different thing. I, I'll never forget that. You know, they they cheered the heck out of them. Well, we, <laughs> but they booed the shit out of us too. <laughs> <laughs> Canada's the same way. Yeah. You know, you go to Canada, man, they cheered the damn ba- uh, the heels and boo the babies. <laughs>